A pleasant day, everyone. Today, we will be discussing about the parts of a research proposal. And of course, when we say about research proposal, it doesn't mean that this is true to all institutions, regardless of what school you are enrolled in. A research proposal is, most of the time, institutional. However, parts of the research proposal may be the same, only that the arrangement is based on institutional format. So here is the parts of a research proposal for Central Mindanao University, specifically College of Education. If you are a student enrolled in Central Mindanao University and you are looking for how a research proposal is to be made, then this video is for you. So let's start with the preliminaries. So there are four parts of the preliminary parts of a research proposal. So we have the title page, the table of contents, list of tables, and the list of figures. Of course, your title should be approved by your advisor and your panel of evaluators or examiners or advisory committee, whatever it is named in your institution or in your college, before you are supposed to write your research proposal. In the contents, you should indicate the different parts and the page numbers. And of course, you will list down the tables as well as your figures. Chapter 1 of your research proposal is entitled Introduction. So the whole chapter is an introduction of your proposal. So in that chapter, you have five subparts. The first part is background of the study. Next is the statement of the problem. Third, objectives of the study. Fourth, significance of the study. And the last one, scope and delimitation of the study. For the background of the study, I would suggest that, you, that when you write this part, all you have to do is to present first general views followed by a regional or the context in the Philippine setting, then followed by local uh, context of your topic, and then the specific, say for example, in a school. So say for example, if your study is about performance of students in mathematics, then you will be presenting what is the performance of students in mathematics or what is the general truth about mathematics performance of students all over the, the world or the country then followed by in the region in Mindanao at a specific division or region or your locality or your in your school so that's how you have to present your background of the study most of the time background of the study is composed of more or less two pages only for the statement of the problem you need to write down first the general statement of your problem then the specific problems we will be discussing how to write statement of the problem later on in a different video objectives of the study of the study is actually the statement form of your statement of the problem remember if you have five statements of your problem and you should have five objectives of your study only that your statement of the problem is in question form and your objectives of your study is in statement form next is the significance of the study now you need to write down first the general importance or significance of your study in the context of your topic uh, and then you have to enumerate who among the stakeholders would be benefited out of the result of your study so you need to identify who are the beneficiaries and then you write significant contribution that you can make to them per paragraph per stakeholder. Say for example, about performance of mathematics. 
So the first to be benefited will be, say for example, the administrator. So in a paragraph, you will write down uh, how your study would actually give significance to the work of an administrator. Then scope and delimitation of the study. Most of the time, scope and delimitation of the study differs from institution to institution. Some institution write scope and limitation of the study. But in CMU, our format is scope and limitation of the study. Meaning, you will just write what is your study's scope is all about. Do not write any more about its limitation. So you need to write down in your scope and delimitation of the study, you need to write down what specific locality, context, topic, specific topics, persons involved or the participants and the respondents, and the things that will do in your specific study. You don't need to write statements or statements like limitation. No, you should not. It should be the scope. So you have to tell the readers what is the specific thing or how or the range you have to write only those what is involved who are involved where are you supposed to conduct your study in this purpose so now let's proceed to chapter two chapter two is about theoretical framework and in the theoretical framework which is the name of chapter two there are two sub parts we have first is the review of related literature if you will be doing quantitative research but if you will be doing qualitative study it will be renamed as review of technical literature and then you have conceptual framework for quantitative study but for qualitative study you don't need to have conceptual framework as well as the last part sub parts hypothesis of the study so only in a quantitative research study that you need these three subparts if you will conduct a qualitative study you may only have review of technical literature so what is this review of related literature is all about if for example you have three variables in your study one dependent variable and two independent variables so it is expected that in the review of related literatures you have sub components on say for example performance in mathematics is your dependent variable first you have related literature and performance and if your sub variable is about self-efficacy and attitude you will have another set of related literature and studies in your self-efficacy and attitude and then come up with conceptual framework or shall I say the relationship of theories to your existing study and what findings in your review of related literature and the gaps that you find in that literature that makes you think that this is the study that I have to undergo or that I need to conduct because there's a gap in the literature and the present status of the topic that I am conducting. So remember, your related literature should be connected to your conceptual framework as well as the hypothesis of the study. In our university, hypothesis of the study is written in the null form not in research hypothesis form so you may start with there is no significant relationship or there is no significant difference among the variables or you may write as variable a is just the same with variable b or variable a is the same as what two groups of students are experiencing depending on the constant so again the hypothesis of the study is not in a null form in our university 
Chapter 3 is on methodology. So this is the last chapter for a research proposal. So methodology is composed of six subparts. We have the first part, it's research design. The second part is the locale of the study. The third is participants of the study, instrumentation, data gathering procedure, data analysis, or statistical technique. So for the research design, you have to understand that your research design can only be determined if you have already a very clear statement of your problem. So it should match. Your statement of the problem as well as your objective should match your research design. So you need research on how can you best answer your research problem or what research design are you supposed to use so that you can best answer your research problem. So that is the first thing that you need to think about. For the locale of the study, of course, you just simply write where you are supposed to conduct your study. Participants of the study, who among the stakeholders in your institution or in your locality are you gathering data? So you have to write them down. And then for instrumentation, this is very critical because you need to find valid and reliable questionnaires or instruments in order to gather valid and reliable data. Instrumentation can be identified if you already know your research design. You are supposed to enumerate number of research design based on different research questions or statement of the problem that you wish to answer. So again, your instrumentation is very much related to your research design, which is very related to your statement of the problem. And of course, in the data gathering procedure, you need to look into how or the process or the steps or the procedures in which you have to gather data. And then if you do quasi-experimental research design and you have two interventions, so you need to describe that intervention, two interventions in the data gathering procedure. And the last part is data analysis or statistical techniques. Data analysis is used when you are conducting qualitative research. And you will name that part statistical techniques if you will do quantitative study. In the data analysis, you will be going to write how you will process your data that you gathered from the instruments that you use based on your statement of the problem. And of course, the last two parts in the research proposal is the references and the appendices. Your references includes the studies, the literature, books, journals, e-journals that you actually cited in your paper. So be sure that all those things that you write down in the references are found as in citation in your paper and for your appendices you may attach here sample test questions tos instruments communications you need in the conduct of your study and i guess that's the parts of a research proposal and we will be discussing more on the specifics in every part of the research proposal in the next video so stay tuned thank you for listening god bless and save everything